So this is going to be th case three. I think I called the last one case two, so this is case three. So it's going to be same line. Our first will be 2x plus 3y plus 2 dx plus 4x plus 6y plus 4 dy equals 0. How do we know this, these are the same lines? Aside from I wrote it on the board, but mathematically. So they're multiples. So last time we saw they were multiples, except they were all their constants were not multiples, but this time they're act just multiples of the other one. So we're going to do the same thing we did last time. We're going to let u equal the first. You can choose either one for u. I'm going with the one on the left because then I'll have 2u as the other one instead of a half. But it doesn't, doesn't matter which way you go. Let u equal 2x plus 3y plus 2. Get some plastic silverware next time. All right, so we got u is 2x plus 3y plus 2. And we're going to have to sub out the d. Let's see. We're going to not have any x's and y's. So <clears throat> let's go ahead and compute du right now. So we got 2dx plus 3dy. We need to get this down to two variables. We're going to have a choice. We can either eliminate x or eliminate y. Uh, well, I should say. What I have circled is going to turn into u. So the x, the regular x's and y's are going to all disappear. But what I'm going to have left is dx and dy. So I have to take one, either dx out and have only uh, dy and du, or take dy out and have dx and du. So I'm only allowed to have two variables total. My regular variables are all going to be subbed out, but my derivative variables have to be just two types. So I'll do this incorrectly at first, and you'll see what I mean. Or not incorrectly, but I'll sub out. So we got u dx plus 2u dy equals 0. So this is actually three variables in here. There's u, dx, and dy. So I can't have all those three. So let's just go ahead. Well, leave dx in. Let's get dy out of here. So what I need to do is sub out dy. So I need to solve for dy here. So we're going to solve for dy. dy is one-third du minus two-thirds dx. And we're going to make that substitution in here. And again, I just arbitrarily chose to solve for dy. I could have chosen to solve for dx. In this case, I had the choice. So I just arbitrarily went one way instead of the other. All right, how are we going to solve this? So we're going to group up by the derivative variables now. So we're going to group up by du's and dx's. So do that, and then see if you can solve it all the way. So I'll take a two or three minutes and just solve it all the way through. But I'll come around to help you for a minute if, if you need it.
So any questions getting down to this form? What can I do from here? Subtract over and, and get rid of the u's. So I can basically divide by u. Now if I divide by u, what am I assuming about u? I'm assuming that you're not zero, or that u's not zero. So if u is not zero, I can make this move. Uh, I think u equaling zero would be a solution up in this ODE right here. If you just look at it, u is zero, this will pretty be true. Uh, now that being said, what does it mean for u to equal zero? It means that 2x plus 3y plus 2 equals zero. So that is one solution to this equation. So I'm going to write that one out. So we're basically, when we divide by u, we're ignoring that solution. We're assuming that u is not zero. So we're basically discarding a solution, and we're going to write that solution down that we're discarding. You can pretty easily solve for y if you want to. It's probably not worth me doing, but you can solve this one for y really easy. It's really easy to check that this will be a, uh, an answer. <coughs> you actually can check super easily. All you have to do, 0 goes here, 2 times 0 goes here. That's it. That's why it's a solution. So you don't even really need calculus to check this one. All right, so let's get back to the when u is not zero, solution. And we just have to integrate. This is probably the easiest differential equation we'll do. So we got minus x plus 2u equals c. And then we just have to take out u. So u is 2x plus 3y plus 2. can collect everything together so we got 3x plus 3y uh, we do have a plus 4 I'll subtract to the other side c minus 4 but we know that that's just a new constant uh-oh sure will be 6y c minus 4 I'm just going to rewrite this c minus 4 as just constant c So here's our other solution we get. So that's the end of linear. We kind of did the hardest one first, the one in the middle is kind of medium difficult, and then the super easy one at the end. So again, the reason I'm going through all these proofs slowly is so that when you start to, uh, you're building intuition. So when you see like this differential equation, you have a pretty good idea of things you can do. So you're not just, oh, it's not exactly a form that I've seen before. And you have to look at your chart and figure out, oh, it's sort of like this one that you'll have experience uh, with just solving ODEs in general. So we're going to get to exact is the next type. And it's going to feel semi-homogeneous, but it's going to have a very different relationship. So we're going to have our ODEs the same form that we had before, which is a function of x and y in front of dx, and a function of x and y, a different function. So we'll call the first coefficient function p, the second one q. So before we get into definition, let's just suppose that there exists, so that's our backwards e, there exists a function f of x, y, such that dz equals the x derivative dx plus 
y derivative dy. So this function would be a solution if uh, z is constant. Partial derivative with respect to yep, so those are partial x, partial y, yeah. So, so yeah, so function of two variables, so you could take two different derivatives, one for each variable. Yeah, so that's that notation we used in Calc 3 last quarter. Yeah, we didn't use it in Calc 4 to a lot, so I just wanted to make sure that yeah. we were referring to the same thing. Yeah, I think it's one of the few times, no, we'll, we'll use partial derivative notation um, a few more times too. All right, so this function is a solution uh, exactly when z is constant. So it's basically saying that exactly when f of x, y equals a number c all the time. Uh, moreover, the p function would be the x, no, yes, the x derivative, and q would be the y derivative. If your function is constant, what is uh, the derivative of constant? Zero. So we would get uh, dz, if z is constant, we would get zero for that. So if you go back up to the previous time I wrote this out, you would get that uh, fx dx plus fy dy equals zero. So that would be the basically solution up here where p is fx and q is fy. So that would be the solution. Uh, if this function f is differentiable, then the mixed partials would be equal. So if f is diffable, this is the multivariable differential, uh, differential differentiable definition, where your derivative it's not just you can take an x derivative and a y derivative, but uh, the derivatives are continuous. And another way to uh, equivalent condition is the mixed partials are equal. So f is diffable um, exactly when. fxy equals fyx. So you can take your xy derivative would be the same as the other order. And I just mean that like um, the derivative of x in respect to y and the derivative of y in respect to x? We're taking two derivatives. So I'll unwind this a little bit here. Oh. So when you apply these, <coughs> when we just look at fxy, the derivative we apply first is, well, I shouldn't really use the word first. If you associate it properly, it would look like this. So you'd be applying an x derivative first and then a y derivative. So if I unwind this definition, uh, you're taking a y derivative of the x derivative. And now I'm going to move, rewrite the x derivative as d dx. So that's really what what fxy is. It's really the x derivative first, y derivative second. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. We got d dx, then d dy of f. And if we look above this right here, the x derivative of f was p. And the uh, y derivative of f was q. So we'll shorten this down a little bit. And this is just py equals qx. This is the condition we're going to check to see if uh, this is an exact ODE.
and I'll just rewrite that ODE without the of xy part. So we got PDX plus Q dy equals zero, and it's going to be exact if the uh, condition I wrote down is satisfied. Now, once you know it's exact, basically your solution is the antiderivative of the y antiderivative of p and the x antiderivative of q. Now, when I say and, I basically mean sum, but uh, when we take antiderivatives, you pick up constants, and so you can pick up some things that are not in the other derivative. So I'm going to explain this in a kind of hand wavy way where I just say it's the quote union. And then we do some examples, I'll show you what I mean. You're basically unioning up, but not taking repeats. So you're going to see constant pop up in each, you're only going to have one constant. Uh, and functions that only depend on one variable won't show up in the other one. So this will make a little more sense as we go through. So I'll just write down uh, the ODE. Wait, no, we wrote that. The solution. is the union of antiderivatives. So we need to take an, where are we? <coughs> Basically we take an x antiderivative of p, is that right? Yeah, x antiderivative of p and a q antiderivative, of, and a y antiderivative of q, jeez. So we got p dx. Uh, and integral q dy. This is only going to work if it's exact. So you can't just uh, anti-differentiate p and q and then union them together and say it's a solution. It's only a solution if it's exact. Uh, for It may not have been entirely clear up here, but if it's exact, what that means is there exists a, constant, a function equal to a constant such that the x derivative is p and the y derivative is q. And that function will be the solution. So all you have to do is recover that function. And the way we do it, we're given basically fx and fy, so we just anti-differentiate each one and then combine them together. And I think I have two, yep, I have exactly two example problems. So we're going to be out of exact very, very soon. There's plenty of other sections that are difficult that we'll spend a lot more time in. So there's also, in your book, there's more formal procedure for doing this. This section is still part of our homework to write uh, 6 through 10. Yeah. yeah, I think we go up to 10, yeah. Basically, it's all the first order uh, solution type, uh, ODE types that we do. And then we do second order next. And then you wanted us to just to feel that until we get through all the sections that we're looking use different. Yeah, well, we're almost done now. We only have one more to go, and it's for nope, it's integrating factors. Uh, so you can go through. You should be able to detect pretty quick if they're exact. Linear should take two seconds to determine linear or not linear. That's like super easy to detect if it's linear or not. Separable, sometimes you have to be a little more clever with your algebra. Sometimes you can see separable in two seconds. Sometimes. You're, it takes three or four algebra steps to get it separable. And sometimes you think three or four algebra steps to make it separable, and it really won't. Like, I just can't separate x and y, even though it looked like I thought I could. So it kind of just depends, but uh, linear is usually easy, the easiest to detect. It's also the hardest solution method to do, in my opinion. So it has a double-edged sword. You can notice it in two seconds and then take 20 minutes to solve it, whereas exact may take you a little bit longer to notice it, but the solution's going to go really fast, like three minutes or so. So you kind of have to, you have to do enough problems so you have a feel of, oh, I see that it's linear, but maybe there's a faster way to solve it. All right, so there's formulas on page 76, and they're labeled 9.45 and 9.47. You're more than welcome to use those. I'm just going to use intuition here instead using that uh, union that I wrote down. So our first example, solve cos y dx minus 
x sine y minus y squared dy equals zero. So any chance this is linear? No, there's a trig function, can't be linear. So no way it's linear. It does not look easily separable. I might be able to, I don't think I can separate this guy out. So I think it's pretty much down to homogeneous, but homogeneous is probably not going to work so well with a cosine and sine in there. So we're pretty much, all the other solution types are not going to work here. All right, so all we have to do, I'm going to write down P is cos y, Q is the other function. Now, there's a minus in between. That is significant. If I go back to the original, there's a plus. So what does that really mean that Q is? The opposite. So what do we mean by the opposite? Q Q is the negative. Yes, yeah, the negative x sine y minus y squared. So that's it's really important you have that negative in there because that's going to mess up. If, if that was not negative, then this would not be exact. All right, so we have to check first before we just start applying the exact solution. We have to find PY and QX and see if they're equal. So we're checking this condition right now. Does PY equal QX? So you're experts at derivatives, so take your two derivatives, see if they're equal. You're taking partial derivatives. So yeah, if I chose the wrong uh, partial derivatives, I would, let's see, because <coughs> I would basically be finding that f y y, oh, f y y, yeah, f y y equals f x x, which is not exact. So it's super important you take the right derivatives, and it's also going to, when we take antiderivatives, it's of the other variable. All right, so is this exact? Yep, we got these two match. So this is exact. So I'm going to put a happy face because usually exacts uh, are very quick to solve. So all we need to do is do integral p dx and integral q dy. So I'm not going to insult your intelligence and integrate these, especially not pdx. So you can definitely find pdx. Just remember, you're doing an x antiderivative, not a y antiderivative. Pay attention to your variables. So the antiderivative does not have a cosine in it. You don't have to write a plus constant. We'll just do our plus constant when we put every, everything back in, we union it all together. Because you really only get integrating once, you get one constant. You're not going to get two separate constants. Okay. P is already the f sub x, right? And that was listed as cosine. Oh, no. I, yeah, I wrote, I put py in there. Wait, yeah, so that should be cos y. Oh, I totally lied. There is going
going to be a cosine in your antiderivative. Did I mess up on Q? Somehow I wrote that one correct. Alright, so I did make a mistake on the board, but I'm mostly correct. So we will uh, use our spidey sense to detect the mistake here. Alright, <coughs> what parts have both x's and y's in it should be in common. So basically this should be the same. They're off by a negative sign, so which of the two are incorrect? So left should not be, I think, I was thinking of, I don't know what I was thinking, but shouldn't have a negative sign over there. I was thinking of some weird trig derivative. All right, so those two parts I circle, we don't want two of them, we just want one of them. And then there's also, so we're, this is gonna occur once, so we're gonna combine these. We're only gonna take one. Uh, and then the other unique part is y cubed over three. So our union, is x cos y plus y cubed over 3 and I'll put my constant on, on the other side. You could do plus constant equals 0 but I think this so is... This the thing you were kind of talking about like, uh, the Yeah, if you open the book up, they have like the process is like spelled out explicitly. But it's basically if. <coughs> so here's our solution right here. What would I get if I took a x derivative? What would happen to my second term on an x derivative? It would be zero. So the portion that has only one variable in it disappears when you take the other derivative. So that thing I circled only shows up in one of the two partials. Whereas the other terms got x and y in it, a different form shows up in different places, but there is some part, th there's the derivative of x cos y appearing twice. It just shows, it's not obvious, I mean it's sort of obvious, but like this is one derivative of it, this is the other derivative of it. They look similar, but obviously it's different variable derivatives. Uh, so if you have both variables, that term will appear in both places. If you have only one variable, that term will appear once. Mm -hmm. And so when I say union, you're not taking both of the, you're not taking the duplicate. You're saying I'm just gonna take one of these guys, one of these x cos y's, and then the single variable parts. <coughs> so that's the union I'm talking about. And then we always get our constant. So you can check this one relatively easily. It's not too bad to check this. So we're going to do one more problem, and that's the last exact <coughs> problem we're going to do. There's not very much going on in terms of the solution being complex. You're either exact or not. If you're exact, this is how you do it. It's very straightforward. So when you do the union, that's the kind of solution? Yeah, so... If it's exact. Yep. It's just you add all the things, to all the different terms together and don't put repeats. So if I put a repeat in, that's what I would have, and that would not be a solution. So we have x minus 2xy plus e to the y dx plus y minus x squared plus x e to the y dy equals 0. So 
I want you to check if it's exact. Spoiler alert, it is exact. But make sure you check and then take your proper antiderivatives, which is basically just integrate P and Q. It's a good time for questions if you're if you're stuck. Those are wise. You know my wise look like fours. I mean, you could might as well just have a four. Do you have, the, do you have the textbook? No. So you can also I choose problems out of the textbook. So it's pretty reasonable to have it open to that section. Also, if I get stuck, you can un unstick me. <laughs> Well, we can try, yeah. but <laughs> yeah. try to see where w how my solution differs from what the book's doing. Have exactness. So for the P, that means you take a root respect to Y? Yeah. Uh, I just got backwards. Our antiderivative, we're taking the, basically the antiderivative of the problem as it was written. But when we check to see if it's exact, we're using the opposite variable. Because we're supposed to have mixed partials being equal. So what you're really looking at in the original exact, before. We don't really know it's exact before we run this test, but what you're looking at is the, it's f y dx plus f x dy equals zero. That's really what you're looking at. So we just have to make sure that f y x equals f x y. That's really what we're doing. And then you're basically anti-differentiating each piece to union them together. So that's why it feels like we're switching variables. We are, but that's the whole motivation behind why we are.
All right, so the integral should be somewhat straightforward. Antiderivative questions. So I think this one works out perfectly. There's no, like, everything is appearing twice. There's no just x or just y parts of either function. So we're just going to take, in this case, basically either one itself is the solution. So we're just not going to do repeats. So we're union them together. Yeah, I totally lied. Absolutely. Wow. So let's circle the repeats and not circle the non-repeats. So we got the x squared over 2. Wow. Yeah, my brain just saw that as x squared over 2, which obviously would be impossible. So we don't want to double up on the ones that have circles. So we got another 1 half y squared. There we go. So this would be another great example of when you can't solve for y. No, no possible way to solve for y here, but you could solve for y prime after you take a derivative. So there's really no way to solve for y. All right, so that's the end of exactness right there. So the next section is integrating factors. We'll get started in that. Uh, it's up to you. What's I mean, they look pretty easy to me, but they're all poles of parge to me. <laughs> I mean, once you know how to do everything, it's easy. So we're going to start with the exact same exact ODE that we had last time, except we won't know if this is exact or not. So we got PXY dx plus q x y dy equals zero. Now let's suppose, so <coughs> I'm not going to assume they're exact at all, but let's suppose there exists, so that's our backwards e, suppose there exists a function of x and y, <coughs> so it'll be h of x, y, such that I'm not going to write the of x, y, of x, y, of x, y, because it's going to be ridiculous, uh, such that h p dx plus h q dy equals 0. S suppose that this is exact. So if this is exact, we know how to solve it. Alright, how we would solve it over here. Solve by unioning. You'd have to integrate h times p dx and h q dy. These are products, not function compositions. So these are multiplications happening. I don't really want to write the little dot in there. I also don't want to write parentheses because that really looks like I'm composing if I wrote parentheses. 
So these are all multiplications happening. So these are all function multiplications, not compositions. So the only question is, how in the world are we going to create this H? So that's what we're going to focus on in this section. And unfortunately, it's not so easy. What you will start with is a non-exact ODE in this form, and then you're going to multiply it by H, a function you're going to create, and it will turn it into exact. So easier said than done. So all I did was suppose it existed. I wrote nothing down about how, what, how is it going to relate to P and Q. So we're going to develop all that stuff. Uh, so the only thing I really know right now, or the only thing I really assumed is it was exact. So I'm going to write the definition of exact down. So that ODE on the top of the board, HPDX plus HQDY is exact. So what does that mean for this to be exact? What does it mean for that to be exact? So the union will be the solution, but just the definition of exact. Yeah, but how do we detect if it was exact? Basically, P, Y. So it's a little different now. So I have to write H, P, Y derivative is going to equal H, Q, X derivative. So that's, that's how we determine if it is exact. So I assumed it was exact. So this is the property you would have to have. What, uh, to compute this derivative, how, what rule do I really need to use? There we go, product rule. All right, so do the product rule. You can use the little sub notation is probably good. So you don't have to keep writing DDX, DDY everywhere. It's going to get annoying. I'm going to temporarily write the dot for multiplication, but I'm going to come back and erase them all. So those four blue dots are really the, the products happening. And there's no ends. Wait, not so easy? Yeah. I was just warning you, we got a lot of work to do. Foreshadowing. All right, so we're going to do this in different cases. First, we're going to uh, suppose that H depends only on Y. So we're kind of uh, do some simpler versions first, and then see what we get. And I guess we're going to have to do that tomorrow.